Hello and welcome back to GCSE Potential. It is good to be back. Um, I haven't posted in a while because I've been doing my A-levels, but just for a bit of context, I sat my GCSEs in summer of 2022. I got nine grade nines and one grade eight. That was an English language. Three marks off a nine, bit of a shame. This video is going to be going through how I got a nine in GCSE German. Arguably my toughest GCSE, probably my toughest GCSE. Um, this is applicable to most modern foreign languages. So although I studied German, um, Spanish, French, Italian, all of those things. Um, it's the same exam format anyway. I sat AQA, but once again, Edexcel, OCR, they're all very similar, so it shouldn't make too much of a difference. Within this video, I'll probably split it up into four sections. The first section being speaking, because that's the earliest one you sit, then reading, then listening, and finally writing. And this video is pretty much gonna go through the methods I used to get that grade nine. So let's begin with speaking. There's three separate parts with AQA anyway. General conversation, role play, and photo card. Now, general conversation takes up the bulk of it, and role play and photo card are a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna break these down into quite simple things. Okay, so to begin with, we're going to look at role play. And on my right, left, I don't know, um, I've put up an example of a role play. With a role play, you get a piece of paper and there are five bullet points. And with the bullet points, you basically need to give a short one or two sentence response to what the question is asking, depending on the question. So for this example here, it says, um, it asks you a question. So your opinion on Vine Acton, which I think is Christmas and why, one detail. So you need to say your opinion and one specific detail. So that could be one sentence, that could be one sentence or you can do that in two sentences. But pretty much with the role play, you don't need to go fancy. You can keep it very, very simple. To pick up the marks, all you need to do is answer the question um, exactly how I want you to answer it. So for example, in the second prompt, it asks you to give two details. Now, if you only give one detail, you're not gonna get both marks. You're only gonna get one mark. But if you give both details, then you're going to get two marks. So pretty much with the role play, you just need to make sure to answer the question exactly the way it wants you to. Don't go over above and beyond because they really don't need that. So in particular with the role play, there are two things which you really, really need to be aware of. Firstly, the vocabulary. They ask you the questions in German and that's a bit dangerous because you might not be able to understand what it's saying. Um, so in that regard, what I'd recommend is trying to connect the dots. If you don't know some of the words, but you do know a few of the words, you might be able to connect the dots. In the situation that we had, um, Weinachten, if you don't know the word Weinachten, then you're pretty much mudded. I can't really think of a way out of that one, so that's unfortunate. But anyways, we'll focus on that later with vocabulary. So the second thing to focus on is the methodology, how you actually approach it. And this is how I approach the roleplay. Basically, what I did was I thought of my answer in English, and then I tried to translate it into German. So for example, if I had this on my screen at home, on my computer, I'd get a book or a piece of paper, and I'd write down an English answer, and then I'd try to translate that into German. Now, towards the end of it, I got really good at that. So obviously it made it a little bit easier. And keep in mind, I only did this a week before exams. But anyways, um, with that, you just need to continually do that. And if you are unable to fully translate it, I use Google Translate. I know I'm a criminal, shoot me here. But anyways, um, yeah, you just got to put the English in and you will get the German out. So you can pretty much fill in the gaps. So if you knew some of your answer, but you didn't know all of it, uh, use Google Translate. And if you repeatedly do that, you'll start to notice patterns, things which you often say, which come up a lot. And pretty much just through repetition, you will quickly memorize it. So all in all, my methodology for the role play was pretty much thinking of your answer in English and translating it into German. Um, that's what I found easiest. And also, just as a side note, uh, you have to ask a question within the role play. You can ask literally anything, as long as it includes it. Um, sometimes I didn't even know what the words were, so I just said, um, how, how, what, uh, sorry, I said, what's your opinion on, and then the words or whatever. So in this situation, what's your opinion on Christmas in Germany? Bish, bash, bosh. So yeah, that's all you pretty much really need. But now we're gonna be moving on to the photo card. Okay, so it's pretty rudimentary, but with the photo card, you're gonna be shown a photo and there's gonna be quite a few things in the photo and um, they give you a few questions. So three questions you'll be able to see before you go into the exam. And then they'll ask you two questions on the spot. The first question they always ask is what was gibt em auf dem photo, which basically means what's in the photo and you just have to describe it. So there's some really, really good techniques, which I was taught by my teacher, honestly, forever grateful to her. But basically, the first technique is um, you can use specific vocabulary. Here is where you will be rewarded for being a little bit fancy. So I used some saying, um, in, I think it was in der Hintergrund and in der Vorgrund. That basically means in the forefront or in the background. So for example, I'm going to use this example right here, of like a kid with basketball or something like that. So I'd say in the forefront, uh, there were five children 
and then I'd describe a little bit. Pretty much any vocabulary which I was pretty confident on, I would just waffle for England. They were all wearing white t-shirts, um, one of them had a basketball, um, one of them had long hair, I don't even know, I'd waffle for England. But anyways, that's why I'd say in the forefront. And then in the background, I think I can see a window, so if I knew what window was, this is quite a bad example to use forefront, foreground and background, but anyways, just use fancy language, um, that's where you're going to get rewarded. Three to four sentences, I think in the mark scheme it specifically says, and I'll put the mark scheme up here, that you need to use three verbs, as long as you've used three verbs and you've been pretty nice with your description, then you should be perfectly fine. Now with questions two and three, once again you are going to be rewarded for um, just responding. And in this situation, um, they ask you the question in German, you're gonna need a response in German. Now here is particularly where well, I'm pretty glad I used the other technique using Google Translate, because with these, the questions were very, very similar. So pretty much I just used the same technique in all honesty, looked at the question, thought of an answer in English, used German, uh, Google Translate, translated it, filled in the gaps wherever I needed to. And that worked pretty much fine. Um, I think speaking was actually my best somehow, um, maybe, but yeah, that's pretty much what I did for questions two and three. And then uh, I think they ask you two more questions and these ones you can't see. Now these questions that they ask you, they're gonna be short. They're gonna be like the role play type questions. So as long as you can give a one answer, a one sentence response or like a two sentence response maybe, that's all they need pretty much. Um, if you don't understand the question, then you've just gotta basically, you could take a second, understand what they're saying, sorry, not understand, try and like process what they're saying and just spew it back out. So if you don't know what Vine actor means, for example, Take in the noun Weinachten and then just spew it back out in a sentence, even if you might not know if it makes sense or not, because there's no harm in doing so, right? That's all you need to do. Looking at the mark scheme now, I might put it up here and put I'm feeling nice, but it says here to score in the 13 to 15 band, which is the most marks you can get for the photo card, you must develop at least three replies. Ideally, you develop all five of them, but it says three because obviously the first three questions you can see and the other two you can't see. And by development, um, they basically mean you need to include a, a verb because it needs to be a clause. But yeah, so with the first three answers, as long as you develop it, uh, use at least three verbs, then you'll be perfectly fine and you are able to secure full marks in that section. Okay, finally, general conversation. Now, schools do this very differently depending on the school. Um, what some schools do is they give you like a booklet of like 80 questions which might appear. Um, it's a bit weird. I don't really know to be honest. But anyways, with the general conversation, you are able to select one of the topics and the other topic will be random. So, for example, if you were to select topic two free time, then your other topic would either be topic one or topic three. And um, that just gives you sort of an indication as to what sort of questions you're going to be asked. Now, what I would do is obviously choose a topic which I'm most comfortable with. So um, if you're most comfortable with topic two free time, then <laughs> go for it. And pretty much with this, you're gonna need to do a lot of practice. You're gonna need to like make a Google Docs and just spam out tons of different questions which you think might appear. So with free time, it might be like, what do you do in your free time? Uh, what did you do last Saturday with your friends, etc, etc. So spend maybe 20 minutes writing out tons and tons of questions, 40, 50 questions, etc. And once again, it's the same tactic. The Google Translate speciality. Uh, pretty much think of an answer in English. Don't make it too bougie, right? It needs to be like for general conversation. It does like they do give you marks for being quite fancy with it. But don't go over the top because if they know that you're waffling, then it's not going to look that good. It needs to be like a GCSE German students sort of answer, if that makes sense. But just don't go too over the top with it. But pretty much what I do, get that document up, write out a few answers, um, try and recall from memory, but obviously use Google Translate if you need to. And then just get up with your friends and um, yeah, just test each other. I remember going to the top field with my mates before the GCSE exam. Uh, we just got the questions and the answers out. We were constantly just quizzing each other through that. The magic of active recall um you pretty much just memorize those and then when you get into the actual exam the questions are probably going to be quite similar um so with that you can pretty much just regurgitate maybe adapt it a little bit but you should be perfectly fine with general conversation it's the one which you can i'd say most prepare for obviously you know your theme so yeah generally very similar technique but here is how you could pick up the top top marks oh this is the creme de la creme i thought i was an absolute mastermind when i thought of this but basically there's a thing called cultural capital these gcse german examiners when they're going through it they don't really care what's going on right they're just like giving marks or whatever they're just following some repetitive marketing they're bored out of their minds they don't get paid that much either i do feel sorry for them teachers need higher pay that's a whole other story anyways what if you made their life a bit more interesting and what better way to do that than doing two <laughs> two things first thing be funny I'm being serious. Um, I made some joke in my like 
GCSE German thing saying that I hated my German teacher. And obviously they knew that my German teacher was going to be the one quizzing me. Top banter, mate. They love it. They're like 40, 50, 60. They love it. Um, uh, yeah, so try and make jokes as many as you can. Um, another one. Oh, what I was going to do and I didn't end up doing it. Was, I was going to be singing a theme song. I was going to be singing like if they asked me what's my favorite song, I'd just start singing it. Like they love it. Uh, maybe in German. I don't know. But there we go. And secondly, um, maybe include some German references. So um, there's a famous German band. I, if all of you guys start doing this, then it'll be quite bait. But there's a famous German band called Kraftwerk. So if you just slip that in somewhere, maybe just include some references to Germany somehow. Um, the examiners might like you a little bit more. But yeah, that's just something I did and ended up doing decently well. So maybe do that. But that is the end of speaking pretty much. Um, yeah. Okay, and now we're going to be moving on to reading and listening. Now, I thought I'd separate these into two separate sections, but in all honesty, you really don't need to. Um, this is probably the simplest section, and um, by that, I mean you really don't need to do much. I mean, you do need to in terms of how much you need to do it, but the actual thing is very repetitive. Let me stop waffling. There's something called Quizlet, and Quizlet is basically a flashcard app or whatever, where people can create decks, and with those, you can just constantly go over vocabulary. Now, I, me being stupid, I thought, oh, I'm gonna make my own deck. And then I realized I can't be bothered for that. So basically, I went over to Quizlet, and I searched up GCSE German, or if you're doing French or Spanish or whatever, you just up, uh, search up GCSE um, language, um, AQA, your example, or whatever. And uh, just going through Quizlet, you'll be able to find tons of different decks. And these decks, um, varying in size, will be containing the vocabulary which you need to learn. So if you really want to go above and beyond, the ones which have all the vocabulary tend to be a thousand words plus. I couldn't be bothered for that. It's best if you do that, because that will pretty much guarantee you a nine. If you really, really can be bothered, then go for it. But with me, I thought, no, nah, I'm not doing that. So I found a deck which had about 600 or 700 words, but these words were the highest frequency ones. So although I didn't know the most niche, obscure words, I knew the main ones. So I was pretty much fine. But pretty much what you're going to want to do is get these uh, flashcard decks, whatever. And there's a function on Quizlet called learn. And pretty much with that, you get the um, also another important thing. You can either do English to German or German to English. Now, I found that English to German was much, much harder but it's so much better because it means it'll just make your life so much easier because you just understand the words a lot more. Uh, you'll be able to like in writing exams, especially you'll be able to translate really well and all of that. I cannot be bothered for that. If you want to do that, you will get your nine. If you don't want to do that, you might get your nine. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did German to English and pretty much you just had to repetitively uh, recall it. So if it was like Weinachten, for example, you'd have to think, oh God, what's Weinachten? Oh, it's Christmas. And then you write it and it will either say you're right or you're wrong. And just by repeating that continually, active recall, um, yeah, you'll be perfectly fine. So basically, I'd say a month before your exams, what you could do, there's two separate options here, actually. Either a month before your exams, you grind that out. Or if you want to do the safer option, um, you can just continually do it from like when you see this video or whatever, up until your GCSEs, once a day, maybe 20 minutes, just going through that and it will be perfectly fine. But yeah, so just to summarize with reading and listening, it's just a vocab test. Uh, it literally is just a vocab test because if you understand the vocab you go into that exam you read the passages um maybe you get a, pe uh, a pencil or whatever and sort of translate a few parts which you think are important and it's just comprehension so you'll be perfectly fine um another thing to note is that in the reading paper at on the last page there's a german to english translation which is a blessing um but yeah that, that was quite nice that was quite nice i did enjoy it uh, because obviously I did German to English on Quizlet, so it just like was quite cohesive or whatever. But all in all, um, it's totally up to you what you want to do. Um, the best possible approach would be getting the huge deck, um, importing it into your Anki, or just doing it through Quizlet and just doing it every single day. But if you can't be bothered, the easiest approach, which I did, was Quizlet just a month or maybe a few weeks before the exam grinding that out and if you memorize the high frequency words you'll be perfectly fine so that's reading and listening done revising for gcses is long and you might get back problems if you keep sitting with that posture on that chair that is not very good so instead what if there was a desk which could stand it could use electricity whatever it is to stand well here we are the flexi spot desk it can stand it's like 1.2 meters tall very high Standing desks, very good idea. Make sure to check them out. They're the sponsor of today's video. Just as a little tidbit or disclaimer or whatever, in my GCSE listening exam, um, well, in every GCSE listening exam, in the second part, you have to answer in the native language. So the first part, you can answer in English, but the second part, you have to answer in German or French or whatever. 
I didn't do that. Um, and I literally, like, I'm not even joking, I cried after that exam. Because imagine all of this work had been for nothing. Um, I was, I was so sad. I was really, really sad. But somehow I still managed to get a nine. So don't let your dreams be dreams, guys. Um, <laughs> you might still be able to do perfectly fine. I don't really know. But I thought I'd include that in there, just for some moral support. Okay, I've done like three takes of this, but basically GCSE writing is the bane of my existence. I was really, really bad at it. And that's because I translated from German to English when doing my vocabulary. If you really want to, if you have the effort to, then translate from English to German when memorizing your vocabulary will make your life so much easier because you will be able to string together sentences really, really well. So if you've done that, then you'll be perfectly fine. But with writing, I didn't do that. So I needed an easy way out. And pretty much how I did that was by ticking boxes. Now, although examiners say that you don't need to tick boxes or you shouldn't be ticking boxes, from my experience, you should be. That's the unfortunate, harsh reality. So pretty much what you're going to want to do is if you open up the mark scheme for GCSE writing, you should be able to see a few examples of things they look for, which show complex sentences. You can do that or you can ask your teachers and your teachers should be able to help. So a few things um, that might be included, idioms, uh, superlatives, um, complex ways of creating your sentence, basically. If you include as many of these as possible within your 90 word as 150 worders, it will make you look like an absolute star. Because imagine most people only including one or two. Your entire thing is full of these fancy techniques. They're going to be loving you. This is the perfect kid in their eyes anyway. So pretty much, as I said earlier, you're just gonna wanna memorize these sentences, which are really, really fancy. So to make these sentences, there's a few different ways you can go about it. Firstly, the riskiest way, Google Translate. Now, Google Translate is good most of the time for simple stuff, but for more complex stuff, take it with a grain of salt. Alternatively, instead of Google Translate, you can use your teachers, um, just talk to your teachers, ask them for advice. Teachers are like walking Mark seems right, so really do take advantage of them in the nicest way possible. Um, but yeah, um, try to make sentences in that regard because they should be able to help you. Uh, you might be able to find them on Google as well. And another thing, here is the jackpot. In the Mark scheme, for your AQA language, this is only for AQA, I think. In the mark scheme for AQA language writing, whatever, they've given examples of full mark answers to that year's um, 90 worder or 150 worder. A full mark exemplars. Do you know what you're gonna do with that? You're gonna copy that. You're gonna paste it onto your Google Docs and you're just gonna completely analyze it. Why did it get so many marks? You're gonna break it down, rip it apart, rip it to shreds, and then you're gonna put it back together with your own fine thread. You're going to mess things around a little bit, make it your own, and you're going to memorize it. So exactly what I did, I memorized 390 worders and 350 worders. And pretty much when I walked into that exam, I was like, yeah, yeah, I got this, mate. And I did have it, mate. I did have it. Um, I pretty much just adapted these for the question. So pretty much, yeah, these 90 worders or 150 worders that had very fancy sentences in them, uh, I used as many techniques as, I, as, many techniques as I could. And thus, when I put them onto paper, um, it was pretty much fine. So yeah, fancy sentences, uh, use the exemplar for mark answers. If you don't have them or you can't find them for your language, ask your teacher. But yeah, that was most of it. Okay, the final thing for writing. Um, at the end of the paper, there's a translation. It's like 12 marks. Um, I probably got one, maybe two, maybe two, if I'm being nice. Um, and that's because it's from English to German. As I've mentioned many times, if you do flashcards from English to German, you'll be perfectly fine. I didn't, I just, just like, don't, don't question it, man. I couldn't be bothered. But yeah, honestly, if you do flashcards from English to German, you'll be perfectly fine for the entire GCSE. Can't lie to you. But if you didn't, then in this situation, you're just gonna have to suck it up. You can still get a nine without it. I did. And I missed out some of my listening as well. So despite many mistakes I made, I still did end up getting a nine. But yeah, with that little translation bit, don't worry about it too much if I were you. Um, but if you do really, really, really want that nine, then you're probably gonna to want to do flashcards from English to German. Okay, so now that the video is coming to an end, um, I think I've pretty much said, I've rambled on for so long, but I've said everything I need to say. Um, GCSE languages, they're quite unique. Um, I didn't really enjoy them that much, but each of their own, you know? Um, and hopefully you do find some enjoyment within the languages. I hope the methodology has been useful. I think a description of this video, I'll probably like edit and put like um, my revision methods for each language, but it's pretty much the same. Reading and listening was just memorizing vocab. Uh, writing was once again memorizing just fancy sentences and paragraphs. And speaking was just memorizing fancy sentences and using Google Translate. By using those methods, 
I was able to somehow get a nine. If you've enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that. I hope you found me entertaining, you know. I'm putting on a show for you guys. But I really hope these videos are helpful. Um, I'm going to continue this series and hopefully make videos on how I got a nine in every single subject I took. I probably won't have enough time to make these videos, but I'll try. I'll try. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, send to your auntie, um, all of that, mate. Make sure she compares you to me. And uh, yeah, I wish you the best of luck with your GCSEs. GCSE potential is out.